So hello everyone, I'm Li Bo from the Department of Computing, Hong Kong Polytechnic University. And uh, today I'm going to talk about almost weighted proportional locations for indivisible charts. This is joint work with Ying Kai Li and uh, Xiao Wei Wu. So in the problem of fair location of indivisible charts, we have um, indivisible items and uh, N agents. Our task is to fairly allocate the items to the agent. So the items are not divisible, so that of every item should be allocated completely to one of the agents. And uh, the agents, the items are charts, so that the agents uh, need to spend effort or cost on finishing them. Formally, we use cost functions to describe the preference of each agent I. So CI is the preference function. And for a bundle X of items, CIX is the cost for agent I to complete the chores or the tasks uh, in the item site X. Um, in this work, we assume the functions are additive, which means that for every agent I, uh, uh, she has a value CIG for each item G. And for a bundle of, uh, for a bundle of items, agent I's cost is the summation of each individual item's cost within this bundle. And uh, uh, in this work, we further assume the cost functions are normalized. This is without loss of generality. So that uh, uh, for every agent I, her cost for all the items equals one. Our location of the problem is an unpartition of, the, all, of all the items. So that every agent I receives bundle XI and then has cost the CI XI. So this is the citing of a fair location problem. So regarding this problem, we have two um, directions, two research directions. One is the conceptual work. That is, we want to measure the fairness of an allocation. This is a non-trivial task because for indivisible items, it is actually hard to satisfy absolute fairness. So that we want to propose a proper relaxation of the fairness notions and study the relationships between fairness uh, various solution concepts. And the second direction is the algorithmic work. So that we want to compile, we want to design algorithms to compute fair allocations given a fairness notion. So this problem uh, intersects with multiple research disciplines like uh, computer science, mathematics, social science, and uh, economics. Okay, so let's next talk about solution concepts. Uh, Two of the most widely accepted solution concepts about fairness are NV freeness and proportional. So for NV freeness, it means that for every agent I, she does not envy any other agent G's bundle because the items are called are charts, so that agent I's cost for her own bundle XI is no greater than her cost for any other agent G's bundle. So if this holds for every pair of agents I and G, then this allocation is called NV free. An easier definition is proportionality, which means every agent I's cost for her own bundle is no greater than one over N fraction for her cost for all the items. For normalized valuations, this is just one over N. So if everyone's uh, cost is no larger than one over N, then we say the allocation is proportional. So we can see that NV free allocation is also proportional, and an NV free or a proportional allocation may not exist. So a very simple counterexample is if there is a single item, a single chart, but we have two agents, no matter for whom we allocate the item to, this is not fair to this agent regarding to both NV freeness and proportionality. So let we want to design proper relaxations for the two solution concepts. So one of the most uh, widely adopted relaxation approach is up to one relaxation. Uh, the, uh, the underlying idea is that there may be N way, but the N way between two agents can be eliminated after re removing an item. So formally we have N way free up to one item. This is called EF1. So agent I may N way agent J's bundle, but if we remove some item E from agent I's bundle, the resulting cost is no greater than her cost for agent J's bundle. This is also, this is regarded as EF1 to this agent. So if this holds for every pair of agents, 
This is called EF1. Because here, the quantifier is sum, so that we can simply remove the largest item. If we remove the largest item in, in, in XI, it this holds, then it is fine. A stronger definition is to change sum by INA, so that if we remove INA item E from XI, the resulting cost is no greater than uh, her cost for XJ, so that we have to remove the smallest item. So we can, this uh, solution concept is called EF, EFX. Uh, a simple observation is an EFX location is also EF1. And uh, what we know so far is uh, EF1 location exists and can be found uh, easily. However, the existence of EFX location is still unknown, but there are some approximations in the literature. This is about the relaxation for EF, and we can use similar way to relax proportionality. Uh, we have proportional up to one item, prop one, which means uh, every agent's one's cost, excluding one item in her bundle, is no greater than one over n, then this is called uh, prop one. If the quantifier is uh, changed to any, so this is the stronger definition. So everyone's cost uh, is no greater than one over n, excluding any uh, item within uh, her bundle. We can see that a proper X location is also proper one. So that in this work, uh, we focus on proper X location. If we prove the existence for proper X location, then it also implies uh, the existence of proper one location. So the first message from this work is that we prove the existence for proper X locations for additive valuations. So this result also appears in this survey paper by Herb Moly. And um, here we remark that for the location of goods, so this is a parallel uh, line of research, for the location of goods, a proper axle location may not exist. So that uh, this fact uh, shows a significant difference between the allocation of goods and the allocation of chores. Next, let, let's talk about the generalization of the uh, proportionality allocations, proportional locations. Previously, we assumed the agents are symmetric, uh, but in the general setting, the agents can be weighted so that they are asymmetric. Uh, each agent I has a share as I. So as I represents uh, the fraction of the items that agent I needs to take in the system. So in the unweighted setting, uh, SI actually equals one over N, but here SI can be arbitrary uh, real number between zero and one, but uh, and they sum up to one. So this is the weighted citing. Uh, and we can de design weighted proportionality accordingly. That is an allocation is called weighted proportional if for any agent I, her cost is no larger than SI times her value for all the items. And for normalized evaluation, this is SI. So if everyone's value is no larger than her share, then this is cultivated uh, proportional. And um, we have uh, uh, weighted the proper one and weighted the proper X. So they, they are similar with the previous definitions. And the second message from this work is the existence of uh, W proper X or location for additive valuations. So here, these are the existence results. Next, let's talk about the algorithms. Talk about how to design algorithms to compute uh, proper X locations. The first dilemma is like this. So if we are able to design an algorithm that can compute a proper X location for identical ordering instances, then we can simply change this algorithm to deal with the general case when the agents have arbitrary uh, cost. So here we identify a special case, which is called identical ordering. This is actually the most difficult, the most difficult uh, case for this problem. So that if we are able to deal with this case, we are able to deal with the general case. So what does it mean? This is an example. The agents have arbitrary values for the items. And this, the new instance is called identical ordering. So it means that if we ask every agent to rank the items from the highest cost to the lowest cost, then every agent returns the same ranking so that all the agents agree that item one is the largest 
and then item two is the second largest, largest and so on and so forth. So this is a special case, a special uh, instance. If we are able to deal with the bottom instance, then we are able to deal with arbitrary instance. So given this lemma, it suffices to focus on identical ordering instances. And we first observe that uh, for the unweighted agents, for unweighted agents with identical ordering, the top NV cycle elimination algorithm actually returns an EFX allocation. So top NV cycle elimination algorithm is actually a very powerful one in the field of fair allocation when we want to compute EF1 allocations. But here we show that for identical ordering instance, this algorithm actually returns an EFX allocation. So EFX is stronger than EF1. And because EFX allocation is also proper one, so that we prove the existence for proper X allocation. And uh, such an allocation can be found by the uh, top NV cycle elimination algorithm. But then the problem here is, do we really need top NV cycle elimination? Do we have simple algorithms? In this work, we, we answer this question uh, positively. So there is simple algorithm. Actually, a moving left algorithm uh, also guarantees proper X allocation. Uh, but here, uh, let's talk about the bid and the take algorithm. This is um, a generalization of the moving knife algorithm so that the, the items are ordered from the highest cost to the lowest cost. And for each item from the left, from the largest one, we allocate this item to the agent who has smallest cost on this single item. So for example, if agent one has smallest cost for this item, then we allocate this item to agent one. And then we allocate the second item to the agent who has smallest item on this item, uh, who has smallest value on this item. We have uh, shown that top NV cycle oh. elimination algorithm is able- see your screen also. You, you can't see my screen? No. Is it okay now? Yep. I'm sorry that I'm, I'm quarantined in the hotel, so I'm not able to find a better place. Okay, okay. Okay, so let me continue. Okay, so, so here uh, we have uh, shown that the top NV cycle elimination algorithm is able to guarantee a uh, proper X, but we want to find a simple algorithm and we propose the bid and the take algorithm. Here, the items are ordered from the largest uh, to the smallest. And for the first item, we check who has the smallest value on this item. And we will locate this item to that agent. And we continue with the second item. We will locate the second item to the agent who has smallest cost on this item. And so on and so forth. Until after we assigning one item to one agent, her cost becomes greater than one over n. So this is for the unweighted setting. Then we stop assigning more items to these agents. So this agent takes this bundle away and we continue with the uh, remaining items and the remaining agents. So we can show that uh, this algorithm is able to allocate all the items to the agents. And for every agent, the location is proper X. So we prove the existence of proper X allocations by uh, bid and take algorithm. And the advantage of this algorithm is that it can be easily uh, generalized to handle the weighted uh, case, the general case. And uh, over n by SI, the share of agent i, so that we allocate every, agent, every item to the agent who has smallest uh, cost, so on and so forth, until some agent's cost for her bundle exceeds her share SI. And then we stop assigning more items to this agent. So we proved the, the existence of uh, W proper X allocation. So this is about the uh, algorithms on computing proper X allocations. Next, we want to make the algorithm to be robust. That is, what if we don't have complete information? Can we use partial information to design algorithms that can return approximately proper X allocations? So this is our new problem. We are in a complete uh, out cycle. of uh, time. Okay. Uh, so 
let me briefly show the following results. Is this okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, our second question is about partial information. That is, we don't have the complete information. Can we use partial information to compute proper axial location? And the answer is yes. We designed uh, an algorithm that partitions the, 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 the agents into two sites. Uh, so that we assign large items to the first site uh, for, for the agent to the agents in the first site and then run a standard algorithm in the second site. And this guarantees the approximation of two for proper axial location or weighted proper X proportional up to any item locations and the approximate. Uh, so I, I I think I can stop here. So uh, any questions? Uh, thank thank you very much uh, for for your presentation. Uh, I have. Does anyone have questions? Uh, hi, actually, I have, I have a quick question. Um, going beyond additive. Um, like especially like the incremental sort of methods here is there any hope to going sort of out into say submodular or supermodular sort of um, valuation functions uh i'm sorry that in this work we only focused on the additive valuations yeah. uh i'm not sure if perfect locations for submodular valuations but i i, I guess I, I guess yes I'm, I'm not sure 